Hey everybody, welcome to the Sana Q&As. I'm Meredith Miller from Inner Integration, helping you recover after relationships with psychopaths, sociopaths, narcissists, and other manipulative characters. I'm going to read this question. This person says, married 24 years, and I feel such lack of support from my husband. I am a caregiver and work outside the home, and I'm totally responsible for all the housekeeping, meal prep, laundry, etc., and I use my own money to buy groceries, clothes, car repairs, etc. My husband works graveyard at Walmart. He rides his bike to and from work, total 35 miles. He gets off work at 7 a.m. and usually home by 10 a.m. He likes to socialize after work. That leaves only enough time to eat breakfast and go to bed up at 7 p.m. I prepare a meal and he goes off at 8.30. He never helps with anything around the house, even when he sees I'm really tired. He is nine years my junior, 55 years old. When I ask for help, he goes into his bedroom, shuts the door, and sleeps his days off. I admit sometimes I get so frustrated that I cry and get angry, and that just gives him more reason to shut his door. What am I dealing with here? Okay, what are you dealing with is you're giving too much of yourself to other people and you are not giving enough to self-care. You are a professional caregiver. And you play that same role at home. You're taking care of your husband. You're taking care of all of his needs. But he is neither incapacitated nor a child. Okay. Dr. Gabor Mate. I don't know if you've, how long you've been hanging around here. If you've heard me mention him. Dr. Gabor Mate is a Canadian physician. He has some information that will really speak to you. If you identify as a caregiver. He has a video. And I think it's a book too. But you can look on YouTube. The video is called When the Body Says No. It is a sobering wake-up call for those of us who have been in caregiving and people-pleasing positions. He says that the chronic and compulsive uh, need to put other people's needs before your own leads to a greatly increased risk of chronic illness. Okay, let that be a sobering wake-up call. It's not healthy. It looks noble. It really does, but it's not healthy. You're not respecting yourself even though it appears in a different way. I understand. I know it's hard to look at it that way. Here's my suggestion. If you want to start taking care of yourself, start by setting new boundaries with him. Okay, this isn't even step one. This is step zero. Step zero is put the boundaries to protect yourself. Step one is going to be the new steps that you take, the new things that you start doing to take care of yourself. So in terms of the boundaries, I recommend drawing a line. For example, I would start with, no longer doing his laundry or meal prep. I would give him several days of a notice, you know, not just stop in a dime and leave him hanging with no food and go to work, whatever. I would tell him in advance, okay, as of whatever day, you know, and let that be several days in advance, as of whatever day, I'm no longer responsible for your laundry and for your meal prep. You're responsible for feeding yourself and for washing your clothes and picking up after yourself. Give him this notice so he can plan to start taking care of himself. You know, if you're letting him know that you're making these changes because also you realize that you need to take better care of yourself, right? So I would definitely say, listen, honey, um, you know, I know I've been really taking care of you. I've been doing your laundry. I've been prepping your meals. I've Even though I work on a different schedule, I've really been living my life on your schedule to take care of you. And I'm realizing now that I have to start taking better care of myself, um, my health and my well-being. So from now on, you're going to be responsible for your, you know, from this date, you know, Sunday or whatever on, you're going to be responsible for doing your laundry. You're going to be responsible for your meal prep. You're going to be responsible for taking care of yourself because I need to take care of myself. And See what he says as you set this boundary. Maybe nothing. Maybe he's just like, fine, whatever. And he just lets his laundry pile up and he deals with it once a month or every six weeks or something. And maybe, you know, he starts eating a lot of fast foods or something like that or going out more for food. It doesn't matter. And you're going to have to be willing to release control over that because part of the codependency and the caregiving thing is control. There's some part of you that wants control over all that. It makes you feel better in some way. I would look into that. What is that serving you? Especially if you're afraid to let go of those two simple things. There's something there. You're, You're getting a secondary benefit perhaps 
Maybe it's helping you feel like a good person. Maybe you feel like your worth is attached to caregiving. Maybe because maybe you grew up with a parent, a mother or father who was a narcissist, psychopath, sociopath, other cluster B or alcoholic or addict. And maybe this person treated you in the same way and you learned that in order for this person to give you love, in order for this person to care for you, you earned that by caretaking them. Their conditional love was based on your caretaking, what you did for them. And if you didn't do that, they didn't love you, they didn't take care of you. So if this was programmed in your mind and then even as a career you find yourself in caretaking, which means you obviously have skills doing that and you obviously love doing that and that's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. But you can start taking better care of yourself with all the time and energy that you're going to save by not doing his laundry, by not preparing his meal, by not following him around on his schedule, living your life on your schedule instead of his, right? Another thing, when you are a professional caregiver, when you are a healer, a doctor, a therapist, etc., you are in one of these healthcare or caretaking or healing professions, you need to have a radical self-care practice or you will burn yourself out. You will make yourself sick. It will start with exhaustion and then it will go south quickly into chronic illness, right? Take the time to focus on yourself, to take care of your body, to take care of your mind, to take care of your spirit, or your subconscious will force you to do it by manifesting some kind of illness or injury. It will happen inevitably if you don't take care of yourself. If you have one of these professions, you have to have a radical self-care practice to support you. You can't be burning the candle at both ends, going home to the house where with your family or your husband or your housemates or whatever, you're in caretaking mode again and you're not taking care of yourself. For example, I had an acupressure teacher years ago. He worked really, really hard. Like he worked so, so hard and he was in an unhealthy relationship and not happy and he wasn't taking good enough care of himself. Then one day he got into a bike accident and he had to take a couple months off of work to heal. And he said to me, next time I'll just take a vacation. Which is funny, but not funny. You know, the irony is that he realized that if he had just taken a vacation and taken care of himself, he wouldn't have had to manifest all that. But also, vacation is not a, you know, it is not a long-term plan. Vacation is a temporary self-care plan. It's a week or a few days or a couple weeks maybe. But you need an ongoing daily self-care practice that supports your holistic health. If you don't have one of these, you have to start it. You have to start creating this. You gotta start creating the time, first of all. So by getting rid of some of these activities like doing his laundry and doing meal prep for him, that's gonna free up a lot of time for you to start taking better care of yourself. So start asking yourself, what are the first priorities? What do you need to do first? Do you need to focus on your nutrition, on your exercise, on your hydration, on your self-talk, on your authenticity? Who are you really? Who are you really when you're not in that relationship, when you're not in the role of caretaker? You know, what are the aspects of your self-care that you need to most focus on? And then set time on your calendar, on your agenda, like literally put it on your calendar because if you don't schedule it and it's not a habit that you have, if you don't schedule it, it's not going to happen. You just won't do it. You have to almost force yourself. You do have to force yourself at first to get into these new self-care practices. It's going to feel uncomfortable. You're going to feel like you're being selfish at first, especially if you're coming from these caretaking behaviors. So what I tell people who are like, oh, but I feel guilty about taking care of myself. Instead of looking at it as self-care, look at it as self-responsibility self-responsibility. It's your responsibility to take care of yourself. And if you don't take care of yourself, how are you going to be able to take care of anybody else? How are you going to be able to work? How are you going to be able to take care of the household if you're not well? You got to take care of yourself, right? Within the next 10 days, my self-care mastery course is going to be coming out. I will teach you how to do this. I go into five different modalities. Each of those modalities, each of those areas of your life has three to five different topics, different practices, different areas that you want to focus the self-care on. It's much more than just nutrition and hydration and exercise. I'm going to teach you the main areas that you want to focus on to recover from the codependency patterns, from the caretaking patterns, and from the effects of the abuse that you've been through. That's coming really soon. It's going to be out before you know it. I've been working really hard on this for months and months, 
part of the big delays was that I had to up level my own self care practice. I had to be living it. I had to be living 100% in authenticity with the vision that I was trying to create with this training course. And I'm there now. I've been creating new self care practices to take care of myself. I'm a healer coach. I'm in this thing too. I also have found caretaking patterns in myself. I would get into relationships and I would start caretaking this person and it was a way that I could control that relationship or have some sense of control over that relationship and make myself needed. Because if I took care of them and they needed me, then they wouldn't leave. And I would just allow them to abuse me and treat me like crap because that was the dynamic that I learned since childhood, right? So I had to create new self-care practices. And this is something that we spend a lifetime healing from. It's, it's a lifetime practice of self-care that evolves over time. It evolves with us. It's not that there's this quick fix. It's not like we get this one shot or we do this one thing or we take this one pill and it's all good. My coach told me, you know, if you could market that pill, that self-care self -care pill that just forced people to set aside the time to do the self-care, just to set aside the time, you would be a multimillionaire. Right, Because people are looking for a quick fix, they're looking for the pill. People don't want to actually have to make these changes, but essentially we have to make these changes if we want to transform our life. We have to prioritize self-care. It's not egotistical, it's not selfish, it's responsible, it's self-responsible. And that's actually where the self-care course starts, is with self-responsibility, accepting 100% self-responsibility of your life, taking the reins of your destiny in your hand so that you can transform your life. So I'm sending you a big hug.